This is my one car garage workshop, but did I set it up correctly? I have tried to maximize the space in this workshop by building a certain type of furniture that goes against the grain. <laughs> Get it? Because wood has grain and I make stuff out of wood. Let's take a little tour of what has worked well in here and what needs some work. Oh, and I'm planning on getting rid of my favorite and most popular piece of shop furniture for something even more useful. Well, hello there. Let's check out my shop. This is my 198 square foot shop, not 200. And let's start with the foldable workstation. Lucky for us, my cameraman is back from the Swiss Alps. Alps. <laughs> Lucky for us, my cameraman is back from the Swiss Alps, safe and sound. To install this, I just screwed it into the wall, but if you wanted to, you could use a French cleat and it would make installation a little easier. The screws worked well though. This is one of the first pieces of shop furniture that I built in my shop and it's been really handy. It has four of these storage drawers, which are really nice, but I wish it was a little more organized because so much of it is open. Some of the stuff isn't quite as organized as I'd like it to be. The sweet thing about the foldable workstation is that it folds up and out of the way when I'm all done with it and ready to have more floor space. It folds up and clamps with these chest latches and then I have these foldable brackets, which I press the button and then the legs fold down. So pretty nifty. When my wife and I bought this house, we were thinking about turning this space into a workout area, but then I got into woodworking and the rest, as they say, is a mystery. I mean, history. While you're here, I might as well show you arguably the fanciest shop stool around. This may be a little fancier than you need for a workshop, but I really thought that the mahogany top with the white oak base would be a nice contrast. But I'm glad I did it because it's a really nice tool and building things that are nicer than you need in a workshop is kind of my thing. And it swivels, which is super fun. Whee! I'm dizzy. <laughs> Let's move over to the two for one tool cart. This has been a really nice piece of shop furniture and it allows me to store not one, but two tools on one cabinet. Being in such a small shop, it's really nice to have furniture that makes this place really space efficient. The nice thing about this piece of shop furniture is I can use my planer when I need to plane lumber down and then I unscrew the thingamabobs and flip it around when I need to use the rigid oscillating belt slash spindle sander. Nice. One thing that I'm not doing super great in my shop is using the walls as efficiently as I could. But later in the video, I'll talk about how I'm planning on remedying that situation. This is one of my favorite pieces of shop furniture. It's the middleweight folding workbench. Like most things in the shop, when I'm not using it, it can fold down and out of the way, saving a ton of space. It's super nice to have shop furniture that folds up out of the way because it gives me so much more room for activities and to assemble large projects. The only downside with this folding workbench is I sacrificed storage for the folding capability, but I put a bunch of storage in pretty much everything else. So I was willing to sacrifice that on this project. Clamp storage. Believe it or not, I know a lot of people that have way more clamps than this, but this gets me by. This is the first clamp rack that I built and I have free plans on my website. And it got the job done, but I found I had some parallel clamps and pipe clamps that this didn't really work very well for. So I built the ultimate clamp rack. Sorry, I couldn't come up with a better name. And this is much better suited for parallel clamps and pipe clamps, but it also fits trigger clamps and F-style clamps. I call these clamps my babies, and I know you're not supposed to put baby in a corner, but I think they like it. Even with shop furniture that's really space efficient, that folds up, that flips around, it's still really, really helpful to have everything on casters. As you've seen, it's really nice to be able to move the shop furniture out of the way when I need to. Here is my king size mobile miter saw station. And this was one of my most stressful glue ups, but one of my favorite builds that I've done. If 
you open this nifty little door, you'll see a shop vac, which really, really helps with desk collection. That along with this dust chute from Shop Nation makes the dust collection really, really great on this miter saw. I get asked a lot what type of plywood I use, and this is just birch plywood. It's actually shop birch plywood, which means it's not that expensive. I mean, every piece of plywood is really expensive these days, but it's less expensive than let's say A grade. I like using shop birch because I get all these really cool grain patterns that I don't get as much when I use maple plywood. Say hello to my little friend. This is one of my favorite pieces of shop furniture in my workshop, but my number one worst selling plan on my website. It's the double-sided mobile cart and I got three doors in the front, a little space here, which makes it really nice for clamping. And then the second side is open, which I can store gloves, finishes, wood filler, whatever I need. This is my drill and sanding station and it's on a French cleat, which made installing it really, really easy. I've seen other cabinets that are just for drill and drivers and drill bits and miscellaneous accessories and then separate cabinets for sanders and sandpaper. But I thought it'd be nice to have all those things in one open cabinet. My five tiered shelving unit has been really nice to get a lot of the pieces of lumber and jigs that I have out of the way. What makes this different than the shelving unit I had previously and ones that I had seen on YouTube before is I added this French cleat wall. And it's really fun to make all these custom little holders for tools and accessories that I can grab really quickly. I know I'm not the first person to put a French cleat wall on a shelving unit, but I am the second. I haven't shown it at all on social media, but I've been turning some bowls, which I'm really excited about, and I'll get to my lathe in a second, but I'm very, very happy with my jet lathe not sponsored. We'll get to this wall-mounted folding workbench in a second, and it's my most popular plan that I sell on my website, but it's also one that I may be getting rid of for a very specific reason. This is one of my most recent builds. This is the mobile table saw cart with foldable wing. I have two drawers on the bottom because of course I had to have storage, but I really, really like this foldable wing which allows me to cut big pieces of plywood when I need to. The plywood wing is really cool, but one of my favorite things about this is the added dust port. I'll get to my dust collector in a minute, but my table saw dust collection before I built this cart was pretty atrocious. And this has made it a lot better. But it's not just because of the new dust collector I got. This is almost all the way enclosed, so the dust has nowhere to go but into the tube. All the dust doesn't go into the tube, but most of it does. Okay, it's dad joke time. Why did the ducks attack the dog? Because it was purebred. <laughs> you are welcome. This cabinet I built a few years ago, and it's not really the best for this lathe because it puts the lathe a little higher than I would like. But until I build a specific lathe stand for this Jet 12 by 21 inch lathe, this will have to do. I'm really happy with this lathe, and if you have any questions about it, just let me know in the comments. As you can see, the drawers are very organized, joking because they're atrocious, but that's future Thomas's problem. It's still nice that I have some storage. All right, my wall-mounted folding workbench. This was really, really nice and helped me out a lot when I first built it. It freed up so much space around here, so when I have a large furniture piece that I need to assemble, it's really, really nice not to have a workbench taking up all this floor space. The only issue is my shop is really small and this workbench is pretty big. I'm very appreciative for the space that I do have because I hear in the comments and people message me, that their shop is much, much smaller than mine, especially people in Europe. But this is a three foot by six and a half foot workbench, so it's just too big for this space. That's why I built the middleweight folding workbench that I showed you earlier. It's just a better size for this space. So what am I going to do with this? I'm actually planning on taking it apart and then building something else with its pieces. So if you have any ideas of what I should build, let me know in the comments. And since I'm on a bit of a French cleat kick, I'm thinking about turning this whole wall into a French cleat wall. 
but a fancy French cleat wall with some white oak French cleats. I'll keep you posted on that, and of course, whatever I turn this space into, I'll make a video about it. I still need to address the empty wall space between the ultimate clamp rack and the Bob's Burger sign. I'm thinking about putting in some shelves that will be home to what I turn on my lathe, but I'm still open to ideas. Before I talk about this router table, I'll first say that I don't really need a router table. I got it because I needed it on a specific project, but I don't really use it that much. With that being said, it's really, really nice to have when I don't wanna take my palm router to the piece and it's safer or more efficient to take the work piece to a router table. And this router table from Rockler, although I don't use it a ton, has been really nice. You can get upgrades on the table, but I didn't find that I needed it and this has been great. One thing I need to do more of in here is put up more signs. I have a couple signs like this TCW one here and this TCW sign here. And I actually like this one better because it's more natural wood, which I tend to gravitate towards. And that's one thing that I've really enjoyed doing. And I recently got a laser, so more signs are a coming. But my favorite sign is back this way. This is my favorite sign because my friend who lives in Norway sent it over. He actually had this piece of art commissioned and I visited him a few months ago. So it's really, really nice to have this sign that represents where he lives in my shop. All right, let's talk about this dust collector over here. Does that look silly? Yeah. Nice. This is the Rockler Dustrite 1250 CFM dust collector and it really sucks. But that's a good thing because it's supposed to suck the dust from the tool. I recently got this in my shop and I'm glad I did because I like living and I don't want to die early. Well, that'll be a maybe. I recently got this and I'm really glad I did because I like living and dust is really, really bad for your lungs. I'm really glad I got this because I enjoy living and dust is pretty bad for the lungs. I sprung for the canister because it filters out a lot of the fine dust, which is the stuff that's really, really bad for the lungs. The bag that it came with was really small, and so I sprung for the larger bag, which I would definitely recommend. I don't create a ton of dust in here, but it's nice to not have to change the bag very often. One thing that's really nice is when the filter gets all dusty, it can be clean with this lever, which is pretty loud, but I don't have to use it very often. And that's actually louder than the dust collector, which is actually pretty quiet. The only thing I have left to do for this dust collector is create a wall holder for the hose. For now, I just put it up here, which is fine, but it'd be really nice to have somewhere out of the way that the hose can be. One nice thing about being in a small shop is it doesn't take a lot of time to heat up in the winter because it's small. I mean, it's a little bigger than this, maybe like this. So I have a small garage heater that's a solid choice for medium to smaller size workshops. Instead of having to wear a bunch of layers in the shop, which would look pretty ridiculous, I choose to have a heater. I gotta take off my extra pair of gloves. My hands are getting kind of sweaty. It's a pretty small unit, as you can see, so it doesn't take up a ton of space. And this top bar, along with the hardware, allows you to install it onto the ceiling. To access the wiring, all you need to do is unscrew one screw from the bottom and you're there. And to insert your wiring, just pop out one circle on each side. It comes with a pretty nifty remote that takes two AAA batteries so you can control the temperature at your fingertips. It's pretty quiet so you'll barely notice it when it's on and it's especially nice if you make videos like me, it won't interfere with your filming. It has an eco-friendly mode for higher energy efficiency, and all in all, this is a solid heater for your garage workshop. Let's talk lighting. When we first moved into this house, there was only this one light. Since then, I added a bunch of lights, which I'll show you in a second, that made this space a lot brighter and easier to do woodworking. A lot of people have a simple light switch to turn on their lights. Oh no, not me, that's way too boring, and when I turn on my lights, it's a lot more fun. I have this light turning on stick that some people call a dowel. Sometimes I get it on the first try, which I like to call the jackpot. Um, not this time. Hey, there we go. The brand is Burina, and I'll put a link in the description, but I installed six of them and it's worked well. I think I'll install two or three more to get a little more lighting in here. As far as wood storage goes in my shop, I keep it very simple. I got this rack from Bora and it's worked really well. It's actually two sets of racks and I've never had an issue with it. The rack covers a distance of eight feet, but it can easily hold 10 foot boards. 
I went with these racks because they only come out from the wall 13 inches and other racks that I looked at took up more space. And for me, with how little wood I need to store, it's plenty of storage space. I didn't build my own racks for one very specific reason. I didn't feel like it. Now this technically isn't in my workshop, it's in the weird non-woodworking part of my garage, but here we have the fun size base cabinet. <clears throat> this is where I've installed my slow speed grinder, which is how I sharpen all of my lathe turning tools. It has two doors and a hidden top drawer. This is where I put a lot of my turning tools and accessories and just some miscellaneous things. The last thing I have in this part of the garage is this workbench, which is home to my laser engraver. Even though I don't use it a ton, the laser is a really fun tool and this bench gives me some more storage. The cool thing about this is I took apart my lightweight folding workbench and repurposed the pieces into this. I have a full build video of that project and you can watch it right here. For someone in a small shop like myself and possibly you, shop layout is not very important because everything's already super close. Putting everything on lockable casters is a big help, but a much bigger help is using specific hardware to allow my furniture to fold, rotate, or save space in some way. I have done all the work in figuring out what hardware is best, and that video is right here. I'll see you there.